Hey guys, it's Hans here with Angler's Covey and welcome back to our Bug of the Month series. Uh, if you've watched a couple of our previous videos, you'll know that it's January and this month we're focusing on midges. Um, so we've already kind of gone over what a midge is, um, kind of different rigging techniques and then fishing it. So today we're going to go ahead and do some tying of, of midges. Uh, so we're going to do our best to see if we can imitate kind of what we were showing you in the video. Um, and we're going to start with the midge larva. From there we're going to do the pupa or emerger and then we'll go ahead and do an adult stage after that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting out we've got a TMC 200R size 18 in the vise. Um, any curved shank hook is going to work out well for a midge larva. Um, typically what you're going to notice about larvas is they're going to be kind of long and slender. So this 200R seems to be like the perfect hook for the, for the job. Okay, so we're starting off with the midge larva. We're using Vivis 16 aught a light olive. They call this A18 for our thread. There's really not going to be a whole lot of materials in this fly. Honestly, we've got thread. We're going to have a ribbing and that's going to be it. So we'll go ahead and start our thread about an eye length behind the hook eye. And we're going to lay a thread base of touching wraps down to the bend of the hook. We need to make sure we got this thread base here so that none of our material slips. We'll go ahead and trim off our tag end and then walk our thread back up. We're wanting to do as smooth of an underbody as possible here, so trying to do touching wraps. It is a little easier if you're using a thread that lays flat, but I really like the nice thin diameter of the 16 knot Beavis. Next we're going to use this mid-stretch tubing from Hairline in olive brown. We are going to capture this with a pinch wrap right up behind the eye of the hook. Give it a couple solid wraps so it's not going to slip out on you at all. Then we're going to stretch this guy hardcore and again make touching wraps down to the back of the hook or bend of the hook. And again, we're trying to keep this as smooth of a body as possible. If you remember seeing some of the videos, they're very slender and very uniform, very tubular in shape. Okay, we'll walk our thread back up, get it behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to throw a whip finish here just to make sure you're not going to lose your thread. And we're going to take this tubing and we're going to do pretty close wraps here and stretching pretty hard as well. Once we're up with the eye of the hook, we'll capture that with a few thread wraps on top of the material. I'm going to keep the material tight and then give a couple thread wraps right in front of it to make sure it's not going to slip out on us. Then we'll come in with our scissors, give it a good stretch, cut that out. And this is basically the fly. We're going to build up a little bit of a head here, right behind the eye of the hook. And then we'll give it another whip finish here. and then trim our thread. Now I do like to darken up the head a little bit on it, so I'm just going to take a brown marker here, darken up the head, and that's it. And that's our midge larva. All right, next we're going to be doing the emerger stage of the midge. Um, this is a little pattern I've been tying for the past few years that, I don't know, to me kind of represents a crossover between a midge and a bluing olive or small mayfly emerger. Um, I think it works well for both. I've been using it for a couple years. Like it's kind of a mix of like a WD-40 and a RS-2, I guess, without a tail. Um, I call it the DP-42. So we'll go ahead and get started in the vise. I've got a 2488 from TMC and a size 22. We're using brown olive 70 denier thread. We're going to go ahead and start our thread 
right behind the eye, latch down the tag, cut that sucker off. We're gonna use extra small copper wire for the rib on this guy. We'll tie this in on the side, my near side of the hook, catch it with a couple wraps, and then walk your thread down toward the bend. We do wanna go down the bend a little bit. We're doing touching wraps, and you can see my thread is fairly flat. You can always spin your bobbin counterclockwise if you're right-handed to flatten out your thread, which will give you a very smooth underbody. That's what we're looking for. And then we'll stop about an eye length behind the hook. We'll take our wire and we're going to rib this about four times. And then catch it with your thread. Now this is extra small wire, so it's pretty easy to just go ahead and break it off. No need to cut it and dull your scissors. For the wing on this, or the tuft, I'm going to use CDC and a natural done. Now I tie this in a little different than what you'll see on most CDC wings. I'm going to take, and I'm specifically using these very sparse CDC feathers for this. So I'm going to take this, I'm just going to fold this feather around my thread and then lock it down right on top of the hook. Okay, so if you can see here, pinch it, put that baby smack dab on top of the hook, couple thread wraps in front of it, couple thread wraps behind it as well. We keep that CDC right on top. Okay, if it fusses with you, you can always manhandle it a little bit. And then we're gonna use some dubbing and it'll really get that CDC kept where we want it, pointing straight up. We'll get a very small amount of dubbing. We're gonna make a bulbous thorax on this. So I'll keep pulling the CDC up so I can get dubbing right behind it. And then right in front of it as well. Just basically creating a little ball. Very much like what you see on the WD-40. Just like that. Got my thread right behind the hook eye. And I'll go ahead do a little whip finish here. And then trim our thread. And then we're going to trim this CDC wing to be about the same length as the gap is from the point to the shank of the hook. So I just pull straight up, come in here, just like that. And that is what I call the DP42, and it works out great as a little midget merger pattern. All right, now for the adult stage, we're going to tie the legendary Griffith's Gnat. Um, this fly is supposed to represent a midge cluster, and much like the other midges we've tied, it's relatively easy as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use Vivas 14 Ott in black. Go ahead and start your thread behind the hook eye, lay down a thread base capturing your tag, and then go ahead and trim off the tag. We're going to walk our thread to the back of the hook, laying down a nice little thread base. Once we get to where the barb would be, or the barb is, if you've got a barb on your fly, we're gonna get a grizzly dry fly hackle in the appropriate size. So this is gonna be for a size 20 to an 18. Now we're gonna take the fibers and stroke them perpendicular from the stem and strip off a few to give us a nice clean tie in point. And we'll tie this down at the bend of the hook. Walk our thread up. We are gonna walk our thread all the way up to where we started just to keep a uniform underbody and then bring it back to the tie-in point. Next we are going to use some peacock, strung peacock curl. We're gonna grab two strands here and I'm gonna tie those in 
by the tips. So now make sure the tips are even. Go ahead and tie those in at the back here. You can spin your thread, your bobbin counterclockwise if your thread tends to jump towards the eye of the hook. This will help to make your thread jump rearward, as you can see there, which is going to make it a lot easier to capture this material. Go ahead and secure those. Bring your thread back up to the eye of the hook. I'm going to throw in just a little half hitch here, just to make sure my thread doesn't fall off that down eye. We'll now take the peacock, and we are going to wrap it up the shank of the hook, doing touching wraps. Trying not to capture or break your material on the hook point. Once you get up to behind the eye, leave yourself a little bit of room to tie off. We'll capture the peacock with a couple wraps of thread and then put a couple wraps in front of it trim off that material <clears throat> and we'll take our dry fly hackle and we are going to wrap this through the peacock hurl up to the eye of the hook. And then capture the dry fly hackle with your thread, give a couple wraps on top. Now we are going to whip finish before trimming our hackle that just helps me make sure i'm not going to lose the hackle when i do trim it so i'll stroke the materials back away from the eye as best i can whip finish well trim off your thread trim off your hackle if you have any stray fibers coming out of the eye that you caught with your thread, you can just trim those guys. And that is the Griffith Snap. An excellent, excellent midge dry fly. I don't keep a whole lot of midge dry flies on myself, but this is one that I would never be found on the water without. So that's going to conclude our January bug of the month. This month we are focusing on midges. Next month we are going to be focusing on leeches. So make sure you keep an eye out uh, for our blog posts and videos pertaining to that. We'll see you next time.